as you see, I am proud to be an American. Yes. Happy Pride Month, everybody. But not only is it Pride Month here in the United States, it is Prince's birthday. Today is June 7th. And that it means we are celebrating all things purple, beautiful, lovely, sexual, controversial, uh, whatever. Okay? It is June 6th. Oh, excuse me, June 7th, sorry, June 7th. And we are celebrating Prince's birthday. And what we're gonna talk about today, Judy, is this. See that? Yeah, there we go. All right. So, now I've already listened to it, everybody. Oh my God, okay. I, um, it, 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 you know, I have title. I've been a title supporter from day from day one, and um, I was so glad when Prince and Jay Z got together and had a little conversation. And uh, so, title, you know, uh, got the exclusive rights, you know, to this uh, post Prince. I mean, post death release, you know, for Prince. And I have a video about how I feel about some of it. It's a lot of people who say they are friends or fans of Prince, they're not feeling some of these releases, they're not feeling some people are not feeling none of them, think they shouldn't be, it shouldn't be done. Um, they're acting like, um, you know, if we drawing blood from, from Jesus, I don't know. But anyway, it is what it is. And I, I love it. I love it that they're pulling this stuff out. And I'm a ride or die, okay? I am. I'm a ride or die. So when you are a ride or die for anybody, you're going to support them. You're going to be down for them. You're going to hold it down. But sometimes you're not going to like some of the stuff they say or do. But if you are a true ride or die, you'll give your opinion on it. But you know what? You're going to still be ride or die. Now, like I said, I listened to this, uh, I listened to this release last night about 11 o'clock Central Time. So uh, I've gotten... I've got you know used to when title do something exclusive and they said they're gonna drop it on that day I already know it's about 11 o'clock my time here in Texas so let's talk about a few of these songs I, I'm you know what I can't do this out loud because you know the uh, the state of Prince they are very 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 strict about um, about they are very strict when it comes to this uh, uh, copyright stuff okay and so I'm gonna get my opinions on some of these songs now what I'm hearing is this you know the first song on the album is Sex Shooter which is one of my all-time Prince, Prince productions okay I just think the groove is infectious Ready to? I, to be honest with you, you anything? Hey, I'm a sex shooter, shooting love in your heart. Okay, so I like his original version of Sex Shooter. Um, it's at first last night when I first laid down, listened to it, I was like, I cringed some in different areas and I'll get to that. It was a little, it was a little odd for me to hear him singing Sex Shooter and I've been waiting to hear him sing it. I thought maybe he would change, you know, have some changes to it. But what I'm finding with a lot of these songs is like... If Prince was doing karaoke in his own house to his own backtracks, you know, and he just said, you know what, I'm just going to do this song the way I had, you know, the girls did it, I'm going I'm to do it the way, you know, he did it, he did it, he just, you know, I guess he had, you know, the lyrics rolled out, and he, when he did the, the, the demos, you know, pretty much, I'm, I'm wondering, because like I said, the, the backing tracks 
uh, sound exactly what we heard when, when they were released. Okay, and I'm not sure if there are other versions where you know it's more stripped down because some of the songs are stripped down a little bit according to you know slightly different but no real different than the original releases it's just his voice on them and I like Sex Shooter. Sex Shooter is um, Sex Shooter is cute. Now the next track is Jungle Love by the time like I said the music the music itself is good. I mean, it's it's just like it's just like what we heard when it came out. But I'm not feeling Prince on this. I'm not feeling his vocal on it at all. Mm -mm. I like Jungle Love. I like I like the Tom's version. I, it was definitely meant for Morris Day to sing it, but. I'm not feeling Prince on it at all. No, um, it doesn't even sound. It doesn't even sound like to me. It's, it doesn't sound like Prince. It sound like he he definitely wrote this for somebody else, and like it, another one of his pretend characters. But it doesn't suit him. It, it's just the groove is hot, but even the groove itself. And we all know it's Prince. We all know he put his input on it. We all know, you know, uh, he was the producer. Even maybe a little bit co-writing on it, even though the credits say Morris Day and Jesse Johnson. Uh, I, I'm just not... Mm -mm, it doesn't work for me. Now, Manic Monday, I was really looking forward to hearing. It's... I really like Manic Monday by the Bangles, okay? So, to hear Prince's original version of this. Six o'clock. Okay, so, I was thinking about Manic Monday, okay? Number one, I would have loved to, if, if he would have kept it and put it on, let's say, uh, Parade, okay, which is the the official soundtrack for Under the Cherry Moon. I can see it being on there, maybe, uh, or as a B side to one of the singles for that album, because it, it it feels like it was written around that time. That um, it it does feel like it was one of those songs that was written around the the Parade era. And I'm you know I'm not one of these people that go deep 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 into the Wikipedia of Prince and you know I love him I'm a ride or die but I'm not about to spend I got too much other stuff going on I got to work I got bills to pay I got 1500 shows to do I got videos to do and I'm just not I'm not dig, digging deep 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 you know I read I've read everything all the websites but anyway so anyway um but what I'm saying is I think this would have been a cute song for Wendy and Lisa maybe to do um it's not uncommon for you know groups or bands to have other singers so I think it would have been cute for them to do as a revolution um, you know single or whatever the case might be and uh, it's, it's cute you know there is a you could definitely hear the difference in his original demo and then the touches that um, happened with the, the you know that the Bangles did or he produced uh, for the Bangles with the multi voices so the one song I was really really excited for is Noon Rendezvous now New Rendezvous is a trick me is a track off of Sheila E's glamorous life album I have actually heard a bootleg of him doing it live and I love his live version of it. His 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 original in studio demo is very sexy. And it's one of them songs when I when I hear it, it's very intoxicating as he says in the song. And I love his falsetto in the song. But 
I can see now, I can see him performing this in Purple Rain, okay? Um, Noon Rendezvous is definitely a Purple Rain era song. I actually, you know, his vocals and the way, like I said, his falsetto is amazing in it. Um, but I can see him doing, doing Noon Rendezvous in the movie Purple Rain. So, uh, I do see him doing it then, okay? Uh, so, with that being said, uh, that is definitely one of my other picks. Um, the next song I'm not feeling is Makeup. I, I don't care for makeup at all, okay? Not at all. It just, ah, uh, no, mm -mm. I just didn't, I mean, I love the music for makeup, but I like Susan's vo vocals on it. And, you know, when I heard that, when, you know, Vanity Six is just to my heart, but I don't want to hear Prince doing makeup. It, it, it just really kind of, kind of disturbed me in a way. Um, you know, I know it gives in a very androgynous kind of feel to it when he's doing it, but it, I just didn't care for it. Even with the original backing track on it that, you know, we hear on the album, I'm just not feeling I wasn't feeling it. <clears throat> okay, so we were in the middle of uh, talking about Prince the Originals and oh God, okay, my camera went out on me, uh, the battery, whatever the case might be. Um, but I was, I'm going to pick it up from where we left off. We were talking about the album, okay? So we're in the middle of it. Um, back to uh, 100 miles per hour, okay? Uh, I'm a, I was a fan of Maserati, so I really liked them. I thought they were pretty much the, the next wave, you know, that was going to be big, big stars. Um... 100 miles per hour was was a solid groove on the album and it was a single for them um, it definitely it definitely is one of those songs that um, uh, I, I you know at the time I wouldn't seen Prince doing but as he went into his more independent phase um, with the MPG and stuff I can see him maybe putting 100 miles per hour on one of the MPG albums, you know, like Gold Nigger or, uh, you know, something like that. But um, back when Maserati, he introduced the world of Maserati, I, I wouldn't have seen him doing a song like that. Um, the next song on the album is uh, You're My Love. I wasn't feeling it. It is one of those. It was. It was one of those cringe-worthy moments I had. Um, I didn't like his vocals. I didn't know what the hell was going on with his vocals. He was singing. Maybe he was demonstrating how the song should have been sung, and uh, I just wasn't feeling it. Now, what I didn't get about "You're My Love" is this. The the instrument, and I'm thinking this song was either recorded at one time, and I mean, you know, the, the written and recorded at one time, and maybe went back and he redid it according to how he think that the person who he was gonna give it to, which I think maybe it was uh, Kenny Rogers. I have to go back and check uh, on this. Somebody, you know, hit me up, Prince's friend. Somebody, you know, put it in the comments. And let me know, but. The music itself, okay, the, the backing track sounds like one of his songs he made on the first two albums, you know, either For You or Prince, his the self-titled album. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like the music he was doing back doing his first two albums. But the way he's singing, the way he's singing is like, okay, he pulled this song out of the vault and went back and he demonstrated on how he, you know, it's a full song, it's not chopped up or anything, um, but it, it was just, oh my God, it made me cringe and made me roll over and wake up and go, what the holy hell is this? 
Now, what was kind of surprising is Holly Rock, okay? I forgot that Holly Rock was gonna be on this album. I love Holly Rock for Sheila E. Okay. Now the thing about this is one of three Sheila E. produced. I mean, pr I mean, uh, produced or pen songs uh, that he produced for Sheila. And with Holly Rock, I I can see Holly Rock. I can see Holly Rock being done live. You know, I never seen him do it live. I didn't care for his vocals on it. And then you definitely put the Sheila E. songs that are on here. You can tell the difference. You can tell why Sheila went in and overdubbed her 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 percussion and you know the things she added to it because it, these demos or these originals are very you know just to the point and the song is there but it's something missing it's them timbales it's them them congas it's all the stuff that sheila and prince layered over the song that really makes it and her vocals so i mean it's funky it's it's there it make it you know and i like the difference you know like whether his ad libs but his um it's just like i said it it was missing something it it, it really was missing something the next okay i had a cringe moment in the beginning but something made me go back and listen to it was the next song baby your trip Okay, Baby Your Trip definitely sounds like it could have been written around the time of uh, between uh, around controversy maybe. Maybe before Dirty Mind, maybe around that time, but it definitely, it wouldn't have fit Dirty Mind. But Baby Your Trip, I, I had to go back and check it again. Now, what I like about Baby, I mean, it's just that classic Prince vocal. Now, where I think Baby Your Trip would have fit, Baby Your Trip would have fit on Sign of the Times. You could have put that right on in the sequencing before a door. That's where, and I'm telling you, Baby Your Trip, oh, I, it's, it's one of my favorite new Prince uh, slow songs, you know. Um, it, it's something about it. His vocals, it's, it's that classic Prince sound that we, a lot of, a lot of people really like. You know, it's like a door. It's like, um, it's, it's like a door. It's like, uh, um, oh my God. Um, it's just got that, I don't know, it's something about it. It's, it, it's just got that steadiness to it. And his, his vocals are so classic. Um, but I'm telling you, if, if I was to sequence Sign of the Times, it would go, it would definitely go on before a door, okay? Especially with a door being the last song on the album. I would have put Baby Your Trip right there, okay? Um, the Glamorous Life. Uh, I don't know. I, if it, I don't know. I just really wasn't feeling. I like the glamorous life, but I think I think if he would have kept the glamorous life for himself, I could see that being a B-side for um, one of the Purple Rain songs. I I wouldn't have seen that as a as anything he put on his own album. Now my favorite. That's, you know, because we're going to go ahead, you know, and that's all I got to say about the Glamorous Life. But my favorite, favorite song on this album is his version of Gigolo's Need Love 2. Oh my God, I've been waiting all my life to hear his version of this, and it's perfect. It is perfect. Gigolo's Get Lonely 2 would have went on... 1999 if, if it was my choice <sighs> it's I mean 
I don't want to take anything away from Morris Day and the time, but it's it's the best song on the album. It is. And I think Black Radio needs to put this in a late night rotation. Maybe he need maybe even need to play it during the day. It's gonna be one of them songs you're gonna put in your romantic mix, your prince mix, because it's sexy. It has everything. It pretty much is it's the, the original version. I mean it's it's the version that you know Morris Day recorded on, but to hear Prince doing it. It's like heaven, okay? It is sexy. It is finally like, oh my God, I had to listen to this song three times because I loved it that much. Like his vocals, to hear him singing it. Um, I would say if, if it was on an album, it would definitely go on 1999. Yeah, it would go on 1999 or Controversy. I would maybe take off Sister Christian I mean, any Christian, and put that there. I don't know. I I, I would say it, it would definitely go on. Uh, Sign of the times, maybe after free. You know, and the sequencing, I could hear it coming on after free is over with. That would have been perfect. That would just be perfect for me. I love die will be done. I'm a I was a fan of Martika's version. I was so in love with that song. That was the prettiest thing that Prince produced at the time. And I like his vocals. And uh, I, I can feel, I can feel where, you know, he, it's, 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 a, it's pretty. His vocals on it are nice, but you know what? It, it, I like the fact that he pulled out the best of Martika on it and if I had to say i would just being honest with you I prefer the original I prefer the official release because she her vocals were so 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 light and beautiful and the combination of her vo her lead vocals and his backtracking on it um, were perfect just to hear him singing it it's okay but like I said, um, I'm, I would be more happier just, you know, sticking with her version. The next song after that is Dear Michelangelo, which is another um, Sheila E. song off of um, a, a Love Bazaar, I mean, a Romance 1600, sorry. And what I noticed that was really different about Dear Michelangelo, there's a lot more guitar in it especially at the beginning of the song so they removed that they removed it for her album um but I, I'm not I wasn't really feeling his his original demo on it I mean it really it really wasn't and it, it, it just it was like okay I really would rather hear uh, her her version but I could see where there's pieces on it or, or hints of toy box at the end of it and if you ever heard Sheila E's album um, Romance 1600 and you know the song toy box you can hear it and I would say that if it was they were sequencing her album dear Michelangelo would have like been there and then toy box probably would have been phased in there at the end because you hear it you you can hear it you just have to know what you're listening for and you have to know the song um, and then the next song is uh, Wouldn't You Love to Love Me. This was a song I, I like the groove. And um I hear I hear Okay, so Wouldn't You Love to Love Me? I definitely hear that whole dirty mind controversy error. Um, maybe the self-titled era, I mean, the self-titled album and, and Dirty Mind, really. This was, a, this was a cute song. I think this would have been a hit. Honestly.
it would have been a hit. It would have been a it would have been a dance floor hit, and it would definitely would have been a great song to hear live back during the time when he uh, was touring around that time. It, it definitely is a song that would fit on uh, either his second album or 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 Dirty Mind. I mean, it's it's that era it's just that era and you have to know you have to know the songs in that era to know that this really believe it or not when you love to love me this version on this on this album the originals would have been a hit it, it should have been released it should i don't know why i don't know when it was a you know whatever the case might be what was the whole issue why it didn't end up on the album um somebody you know dropped me a comment about it but it is one of those print songs that should have been a hit, like Erotic City, like She's Always In My Hair, um, like uh, Extra Lovable, you know, these, it should have been released, you know, I don't know. Um, and the last song on the album is, is not to compare to you. I don't care for that version. I like... The version he did with live with Rosie Gaines, okay, from from you know the MPG or Paisley Park uh, party and you know concert that he did. Um, that's you know I just think it's a little bland, you know that 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 official version that they put out. I think it's bland. It's kind of boring. Uh, but overall, you know that's the album itself. You know. Um, I, I do, 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 do want to thank Jay-Z and the people at Tidal and uh, especially um, the estate for being brave enough despite what people say, what so-called fans say, what people opinion might be of putting out this material. It might not be what people want it to be. But to some of us, it is a dream come true to have this material. I do look forward to more material as long as it's not a bunch of rehashing of the same old stuff. I really pray and hope that you guys are putting together a full album of, of stuff that's in that vault that was a whole album, you know, of stuff we've never heard. I'm talking about really never heard. Um, Maybe releasing, I'm going to say it once again, I know I sound like a dead record, releasing Camille in its entirety, releasing um, releasing uh, uh, Crystal, you know, uh, Dream Factory in its original setting. I don't know. But you know what, whatever y'all do, I'm there for it. I don't give a damn what people say. I'm going to spend my coins on it. I'm going to give you my dollars. Um, I hope to get to Minneapolis and and, v, and see Paisley Park for myself. Um, but overall, once again, title thank you for releasing this album to the estate. Thank you to the engineers that worked hard on it probably for the past year or so. Thank you. Um, and I'm here for it because we are inside of the dawn and I'm going to live amongst it and enjoy it into my dying day. And I can't wait to see what's going to come out next. What is your favorite song? What song did you feel? What song was you not feeling? What songs made you cringe? What, you know, how do you feel? Put it in the comment section. Subscribe. And next time I see you, like I always say, put that in your tea mug and sip on it. And until then, tell your mama, say hey.